package me and you want to have a debate with me about something, but you don't actually want to have the debate. As soon as you realize I've got my facts, I know what I'm talking about. You don't want to hear it. And no, America didn't stage 9-11. No, your cousin who's a Marine Corps sergeant didn't stage it. Criminal globalist infiltrators that fund the radical Muslims on record staged the attacks, opened the door, ran the whole deal. I've proven it up one side and down the other. I've interviewed the heads of the U.S. Embassy who were told, let Anwar, you know, let Mohammed Atta, let them all back into the U.S. They're really U.S. government agents. I've interviewed the lawyer who saw the U.S. government getting the underwear bomber on the plane two Christmases ago. He's been on this show. And months later, the U.S. government and Congress admitted we were ordered to help get him on the plane by an unnamed U.S. agency, the State Department said. Those are facts that don't change. Not one, but two passports. From those aircraft that hit those buildings on 9-11, went through their suits, through the fireball, through the millions of papers, through the feet of dust and fire, and were found that day by the FBI. That's a total setup. They might as well found a Lucky Charms leprechaun down there to find the two passports undamaged in the rubble. It's a frame up. Muhammad is at his bag, didn't go through the checkout properly and was found with all the admissions and and, 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 the, and the flight uniforms and the maps and the confessions. They found, I mean, come on, man. You ever heard of a frame up? You ever heard of a, and you're like, well, why would they do that? Let me play you a clip here. I know I told you guys have the Daily Show ready first, then making fun of the police state and secret arrest, but, but give me Santorum first. Pull former Senator Rick Santorum up where he says, we'll kill anybody we want without warrants, without law, without anything, anytime. He goes, we're killing U.S. citizens. Alaki, the guy who's admitted CIA and who I predicted you'd have a stage killing of once you took him out of circulation. This is the guy who hangs out at the Pentagon secretly. The head of the 7-7 bombing. It came out in the London Telegraph, BBC, and Fox News was MI6. I mean, I'm not the one making this stuff up. I wish it was a bunch of crazy Muslims in caves doing it. This is a lot less scarier than Uncle Sam being a crazy-eyed murdering terrorist. But Uncle Sam works for the foreign banks now. Same folks stealing Grandma's pension fund. Okay. Listen, I wish every day it'd be so much fun to just be scared of cavemen in Afghanistan. But it's not true. So I can't do it. I can't be a liar. I can't be a sellout. I can't do it. I have to live in the real world. Now, here's Santorum giving a speech just two days ago. He's real proud of himself about killing citizens. But then you and now they do, they're in the process of developing nuclear weapons, and it appears obvious to me that the administration is doing little to nothing. Now, I'm hopeful that some of the things we're seeing with respect to the nuclear program that the United States is involved with, which is, on occasion, scientists working on the nuclear program in Iran turn up dead. I think that's a wonderful thing. <laughs> oh, I think yeah. a very clear message that if you were a scientist from Russia or from North Korea or from Iran and you're going to work on the nuclear program to develop a nuclear bomb from Iran, you are not safe. Okay. And if people say, well, you can't go out and assassinate people, well, tell that to El Yeah. Okay? We've done it. We've done it for an American citizen. We can certainly do it for someone who's producing a nuclear bomb that can be dropped on the state of Israel or provides a nuclear shield for a country that will... Yeah, but, yeah, but Israel has hundreds of nuclear weapons. Now, again, you hear all the weak men in that room who think killing is tough. They never killed anybody. In fact, their problem is they didn't grow up in a rough part of town and get beat up every day. They, they think violence is tough. They think it's cute. They think it's sexy. They're all giggling. What happens when Iran starts killing 
U.S. government people. Oh, it's going to be the end of the world. How dare them? And Iran has now said they're going to respond to the U.S. and Israel by trying to kill people. Which will then start a huge war that will bring Russia and China in probably. And we're off to the races. You know, he just sits up there and says, oh, when people, you know, whole military bases are getting bombs dropped on them. Uh, police stations are being blown up. People are being shot and killed and bombed. He likes that. He thinks that's a good thing. Some little soft chicken hawk nobody picking on a country of 76 million people that haven't been under 20 years of sanctions like the Iraqis and are who are going to fight back. But, but notice when they were first trying to pass the National Defense Authorization Act last year that Obama signed December 31st, 2011, that they said, don't worry, it doesn't affect citizens. And the ACLU, myself, Ron Paul, others said, well, it says right here affects U.S. citizens. Secret arrest, we can disappear. And they said, no, it, it doesn't. As soon as they passed it, though, they said, you bet it does. And they had all these creepy senators sweating and hopping around like they were on methamphetamine say on C-SPAN, you bet it's for citizens, you better be scared, I want you to be scared! Because these aren't Americans, these are these are errand boys for the foreign bank sucking this country dry and they fund Al-Qaeda to begin with. Well, I'm looking at dozens of phone calls on the board from Ace in Texas to Zach in Texas, from Wyatt in Illinois to Cody in PA. I've got to expand this Sunday show to three hours. Why do I even come in here and do two hours and not do a third hour? Yeah, I haven't even gotten to the um, Stephen Colbert running joke videos, making fun of uh, Mitt Romney, but making it a joke. You know what, I'll give each caller about 30 seconds so I can get to everybody. I, I'm going to do that, but I want to, I want to right now, go ahead and pull up that John Stewart show clip where he makes the joke out of secret arrest and imprisonment of U.S. citizens. And then I've been sent the secret Homeland Security documents where it's not about Al-Qaeda, it's about us. I mean, this is so creepy. Crooks took over the government. Obama's just their pimp. So was Bush. They're raping the nation. They're getting trillions of dollars a month in banker bailouts. And they think martial law will keep us in political line. Here's a clip of them making a joke about this after it's law on Comedy Central. Barack Obama. All right, that's enough. That's enough. It goes on and on. The whole thing's up at Infowars.com. Obama said he was going to veto that bill so we couldn't form opposition against it. I told you that three weeks before he signed it. I told you it affected citizens. They said it didn't. These are all tactics to make sure you never wake up and get involved. And then I've got a whole stack of news here. I, you know, I see these type of news articles every day. This is out of the Montreal Gazette, radioactive iodine and rainwater. This is new radioactive iodine. Only last eight days, this type. Uh, very carcinogenic, though. Because Fukushima is still melting down, just that's in the Canadian papers, and it basically goes on to say the government has uh, covered that up. So has our government. Used to, they didn't, though. Uh, here's another one. Prosecutor says captain left ship early. This is out of uh, USA Today. Yeah, instead of uh, just actually helping the folks, it took about 10 hours for the ship finally sunk partially. The, the main crew and the captain just evacuated themselves first. <laughs> Captain's never really acted like that previously. The captain of the Titanic went down with it. But, I mean, nowadays they just, you know, eh, so what? Again, it's a society where nobody cares anymore. Uh, don't worry, though. Universal flu vaccine could be available in 2013. Never mind the fact these companies have been given liability protection. So, so what? How many people they kill or maim? Here's another one. The link between processed meat and uh, cancer uh, the uh, British Journal of Cancer reports that uh, all of those things that keep the meat from rotting actually rot your pancreas and your colon and it's giving you cancer. Turns out you should eat fresh meat, not processed meat. And it could be that virus for a decade they've been spraying on meat that eats bacteria uh, is also causing cancer. Oh, yeah, they spray a live vaccine on most of your cold cuts. 
And that's a British Journal of Cancer. So what, though? Hey, who doesn't like a case of colon cancer, pancreas cancer? I mean, don't listen to me. I'm a conspiracy theorist. Uh, that's just some of the news here. We've got about six minutes left in transmission. I'm gonna. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to you when you hear the or whatever. Does our phone system make a noise? I know the weekday phone system does. This one's different. Okay, well, I'll just say you're on the air. I want to hear from you. I wish I had 10 hours. But I, and just make your point and go to the next person. Zach in Texas, you're on the air. Hey, Alex, I got uh, two things for you. Yes, sir. Um, one of them, for, I got an update for you from the Straw Poll local activist group. Got something funny from uh, Breitbart. Uh, the other one is that uh, I'm running for Ron Paul's seat as a libertarian down here, and I went to the Republican only the kind of neocon deal, handed out my information yesterday, and Get a real good reaction, but the people who are running for his seat are big time uh, state government guys from the good old boy system. And uh, all right, well, that? give me some info on that. That sounds interesting, uh, Zach. Uh, what was your point about Breitbart? Uh, well, yeah, if anyone can go to Grady for Congress, but anyways, Breitbart, uh, the Houston Freethinkers put a camera in his face, and they did a legit interview with him. And uh, he was all kind of paranoid about if it was independent media, and it was. And uh, they were asking him questions. And they let him spew the party line and all this stuff, and he talked about Occupy. Well, then when they got down to it, uh, the guy asking a question said, well, what do you think about the NDAA bill? And immediately his face changed, like, the look on it, and he got all mad looking, and he said to Derek, he's like, uh, is this a Ron Paul interview? And then he's like, I gotta go to LA. I'm all, I gotta fly. I hear you, but hey, at least Drudge, who you know, is the granddaddy of all that, he covers NDAA. I mean, you know, the headline, Obama signs NDAA for indefinite detention but won't use it against Americans. You know, his drudge helped get that out. Who knows what's going on there? Uh, let's go ahead and talk to James in Ohio. James, you're on the air. Uh, hey, Jones, uh, where are my uh, Blaze Orange Infowars at? Filled up the uh, family stockings this uh, Christmas with all the bumper stickers. Uh, my sister from New York says she's been seeing them all over the city. And uh, Friday you guys touched on uh, Skype alternatives, and I thought I'd uh, bring up some that I know of. Yeah, tell me some. There's uh, Ikaiga, which is a soft phone, and the Ikaiga.net uh, does the, uh, they have a server where you can use that to make calls to all your other Ikaiga friends. Good. And there's also an uh, open source uh, program, it's Asterisk. It's a server, and it allows you to make, you know, text, voice, and video chats. You can have, like, your own server. Have uh, your people use like a client like? Ikaiga. For those who just joined us, Microsoft has bought Skype and is planning on ruining it, like to do everything else they touch. So we're having to look at alternatives. Yeah. Well, they probably spy on you. Oh, they they do. I appreciate your call. Great. Thank you so much, my friend. Oh man, I got like fifty calls here. I'm not gonna get to all these. Who's up next here? Ace in Texas. Gotta talk to Ace. Ace disagrees. He'll be our last caller out of the other 20 or so. I'm sorry to them, but Ace goes to the front of the line. Hello, Ace. we got about 30 seconds. Oh, wow, 30 seconds. Real quick, Alan, this is a soft disagreement. Uh, I, I'm a long-time listener, three years, and you've been making a, a thematic statement about America's gone or dead because America is an idea, and I totally disagree with you. I mean, totally agree with you. The point, the part I disagree or the point I'd like to take issue with is that you're basically a 2012 skeptic. And basically, I just want to point out one thing, <clears throat> and my name actually is Ace Onslaught. That's my username. Now, uh, real quick, two points. Uh, what I'm seconds. saying is America, as we know it, is dead. We can revive it, but it's dead, so admit it's dead so we can get it back. I'm out of time. I'm out of time, but I'm saying admit we've been conquered by the globalists through fraud and ignorance. Time to wake up, kick the banksters out. Infowars.com.